Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Cinnamon regulations from EU rank all Danish pastry chefs Musical chairs underway for the new European Union leadership How to improve the European Union by making it collapse Marine Le Pen We want a United States of Europe, says top EU official Plus, the EU's visa mechanism comes into force I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News First, from our homepage, too much cinnamon. That was the finding of European Union based regulators to Danish bakers about their pastry rolls. And now Danish bakers are fuming, saying that the spice crackdown is too strict, too burdensome, and too ridiculous to abide. On top of that, Swedish bakers aren't being held to the same standard, the bakers allege. Well, apparently the balmy bakery bureaucrats in the Bruswellian Towers of Babel believe that eating too much cinnamon has been linked to liver damage. Strikes me as a pretty tenuous link. And let's face it, in your view, what's worse for your liver? A couple of Danish pastries with your café au lait or a bottle of Bordeaux with your fromage fray and cream crackers? The European Parliament, the European Commission and the European Council all get a complete makeover this year in a complex game of musical chairs over who gets the EU top jobs. National rivalries drive the 28-member European Union and the inevitable horse trading which will produce a new leadership as the bloc seeks to put the hugely demanding economic crisis behind it. The main focus is who will succeed Commission President José Manuel Barroso, who steps down on October 31st, with the parliamentary parties already lining up their candidates to preempt any deal cobbled together by the member states. At the Commission level, another key appointment will be who replaces Britain's Catherine Ashton as Foreign Affairs Head, tackling the difficult agenda of Iran nuclear talks and growing problems in Central Africa. Council President Herman von Rompuy of Belgium, who represents member states, leaves November 30th after serving a second term in an institution some believe now out overshadows the once all-powerful commission. EU leaders determine who leads the council, an appointment which will be closely weighed against who they get for the commission posts. Meanwhile, all 751 MEPs will be replaced in May polls for a Parliament anxious to flex its muscles across the whole EU agenda, especially on economic policy. The newly elected Assembly will meet in July to name a new chair to replace German Socialist Martin Schulz. Of course, Mr Schulz has already announced he would like to be appointed to European Commission Presidency, which, if selected, will see the German Socialist become supreme leader of the 28-member unelected Commission and provide Germany with the dominant position of the highest order above a Europe of some 500 million people. Right, well, then I'll uh, be off and uh, sell me grandfather's medals now. Sheesh, that was a blooming waste of his time and effort. The leader of France's far-right National Front, which is expected to score well in upcoming European polls, pledged Thursday to do all in her power to facilitate the collapse of the European Union. Marine Le Pen's National Front is just one of several anti-immigration and anti-EU parties gaining traction in Europe, where many have lost faith in the ability of the European Union to help resolve a devastating economic crisis. How to improve the European Union by making it collapse? I expect one thing from the European system, and that's for it to explode, Marine Le Pen told journalists at her party's headquarters in the Paris suburb of Nanterre. We have to wait for everything to fall flat on its face, contribute to that if possible, to bring about the project of a Europe of free nations, said Le Pen, who is already a member of the European Parliament. And that, of course, can only happen with the disappearance of a huge majority of current EU structures. Le Pen has forged an alliance with Dutch anti-Islamic leader Gert Wilders, aimed at creating a Eurosceptic bloc at the European Parliament after elections due in May. 
controversial stuff and a position that liberals will be quick to fan the flames of anti-nationalist rhetoric over. But the positives for the next EU Parliament are that this builds and strengthens the opposition in the parliamentary structure. Even today, the EU Parliament has virtually no opposition, which by its absence allows the unelected Commission to push through ridiculous legislation like Euro-harmonised lavatory flushes, pony passports and, of course, Danish pastry cinnamon regulations. A campaign for the European Union to become a United States of Europe will be the best weapon against the Eurosceptics, one of Brussels' most senior officials has said. Viviane Redding, Vice President of the European Commission and the longest-serving Brussels Commissioner, has called for a true political union to be put on the agenda for EU elections this spring. We need to build a United States of Europe with the Commission as government and two chambers, the European Parliament, and a Senate of member states, she said. Mrs. Redding's vision, which is shared by many in the European institutions, would transform the EU into a superstate, relegating national governments and parliaments to a minor political role, equivalent to that played by local councils in Britain. No jokes now, folks. This is serious stuff. I got the chance to jump in on a Google Hangout with Vivian Redding discussing many topics, but the most telling thing she mentioned was this. We are active on the soil of the European Union. Uh, today, uh, many can- companies coming from outside Europe just do as if the laws were not for them. Uh, in future, it will be one continent, one law, and those companies who do not abide by this law will have very, very strong uh, sanctions. Uh, which will uh, hopefully prevent them uh, from uh, misdoing. Uh, so that will be of utmost importance. Now, Notice how she states clearly society. and explicitly, and I quote, in future it will be one continent and one law. Folks, you know I've been banging this drum for a long time and that this has been the goal all along. For the greatest majority of us, including me, Never have I ever been asked if I would like my MPs, Parliament and National Government to be sidelined and control over my future to be handed to an offshore governance system, which is controlled by 28 individuals that I can neither elect into or out of power. I'm not sure how you see it, but I see this as a massive breach of democratic rights that my grandparents and their generation fought for and many gave their lives for. Frankly, I consider it treachery of the highest order that the British government has willingly aided and abetted this process and done so without consent from a single UK voter. So far, no member of the organisation has requested to use the mechanism, but the legislation was adopted in December due to the increasing number of fake asylum seekers from the Western Balkans and other abuses of the visa-free regime, which in recent years caused concern in the EU. Now, According to a protective clause, the mechanism can be applied at the request of an EU member. The suspension of the visa-free regime can be applied as a last resort in the event of a sudden increase in the number of fake asylum seekers, irregular entries into the EU, or a more massive rejection of EU requests for readmission and return of persons who violate the visa-free regime. It's Friday, so let's take a look at what the European prostitutes have been releasing into the news stream this week. This interactive event taking place as I speak looks to shape the future for social businesses. Social entrepreneurs aim to have an impact on society rather than only generating profits for owners and shareholders. For example, they provide jobs for disadvantaged groups, promoting their social inclusion and increasing solidarity in the economy. But they face enormous challenges and an uneven playing field. European Commissioner for Agriculture spoke this week about the EU's intention for common agricultural policy reforms with a view to creating a modern farming sector. Reported earlier this week that Oxford farmer Owen Paterson was petitioning the EU to allow the use of GMO crops. Well, I'm pleased to say that the EU has opposed the authorisation in this press release. EU citizenship must not have a price tag attached to it, says the European Parliament in a resolution voted on on Thursday. 
MEPs are concerned about schemes established by various EU member states, and in particular Malta, which result in the sale of national and hence EU citizenship. And we reported on the Entrepreneurial Technology Research and Development Fund, Horizon 2020, last week, and this press release covers the details of the event that was launched in Bern, Switzerland, a central and founding member of the European Union. Uh, oh, it's not a member of the EU. Oh well, uh, an interesting place to launch an EU funding initiative then. And whilst this week the EU has been celebrating the presidency of Greece as it takes office in the rotating seat, but in the background, many members of the European Parliament have expressed deep concern over the economic situation in Greece. Now watch this space, folks. The EU recovery seems to be mostly media-driven, and it's tenuous at best. It's early days, but we'll keep a watching brief and, of course, put you in the picture as soon as anything occurs. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.